As you may have very shrewdly noticed from the videos I've posted recently, my dust extraction game in my wood workshop has been 1 out of 10, and that's being generous. This video is about setting up my dust extraction properly, I know, very exciting, but I hope it might be interesting because I'm going to take you with me on the rabbit hole that I undertook last week when I was learning all about how to ground my extraction system, and indeed, whether I needed to at all. So, here's some wood extraction signs. I'm actually going to take these off because I can't see anything. Now, in the big box of treasures that I ordered for this project, there came a bunch of paraphernalia that is very exciting to me. And I'm so sad that that's the way things are nowadays, but whatever, let's move on. And to be fair, they have some cool stuff in here. It's like blast gates, you got the connecting arms. It's basically sawdust Lego. So before I put this all up, let's talk about the materials that I've got here and the potential problems that they might cause in my workshop, AKA potentially fire. Now, the thing about PVC is that it's an insulator. Now, insulators can't conduct electricity very well. As a result, electricity often becomes static when trapped in the insulated pipe. Let's look into that a bit more because in itself, quite confusing. Now, here's my PVC pipe. Obviously, snakes are just more fun to draw, aren't they? But let's pretend it's a PVC pipe. I've chosen PVC pipe for the following reasons. It's an insulator, as we've covered. It's affordable. It's light and it affords visibility because it's clear and you can see if there are any wood dust shavings stuck. And of course, it's venomous. Wait, no, that's the snake. Now let's go back to basics here. Everything in the world is made up of atoms. I hope you know that much, but let's go into it a bit more. And each atom contains three things. Protons, which are positively charged, electrons, which are negatively charged, and neutrons, which are both positive and negative. Now, protons are just super chill. They're loving life, they're in the middle of the atom, they're positive guys, no worries at all there. Neutrons are kind of the same, they're just happy, just doing their thing, lasing around the atom, they're not going anywhere. Electrons, however, these negative guys, absolute pain in the bum. They're like, I want to go see what's going on in the outer world, in the other atoms. I don't care about my atom, I'm out. So when something comes along and rubs the uh, atom home to all of these neutrons, protons and electrons, electrons are like, see you later mate, and they jump off from their current atom into other atoms. What this creates is a very negatively charged area because obviously they're all negative dudes, like they're all chilling together. There's nothing to balance them out because they've jumped ship, the others are still at home. Subsequently, you end up with all of this negative charge. That is static electricity. Now, static electricity is literally, as it says on the tin, these uh, electrons can't go anywhere. They're just chilling in the tube, waiting for someone to come along and give them a bit of proton time. Because sure, they like entertaining each other. They like hanging out in a group on different surfaces. But ultimately, what they're always aiming for is that feeling of being discharged. They've got bored of being negative. They want something positive again to balance them out. So when you come along with your little proton charge fingertip and you go near it, the electric shock is literally just those negative guys freeloading, jumping across to your protons, to your positive energy and zapping you in the process. They create a sort of river and they're able to jump and it's pretty cool. I don't know how that works, but, it, but it's cool. Now, grounding essentially is the process of putting something that will conduct these negative electrons to a proton filled environment. The way that is recommended that we achieve this is with copper wire. So that's what I've got here today. That's what I'm gonna be doing. Okay, I'm gonna stop there and have a little chat about my sponsor today who is Surfshark VPN. Recently, they really, really saved my butt. So I'm gonna tell you that story now. Last year, I had quite a large guitar commission coming through and my Fox style bender decided to break in situ and subsequently I broke a set of sides. <laughs> now, I was not only the most panicked I've ever been and the most stressed I've ever been. Luckily, my friend had a matching set of wood in France where she lived that she very kindly agreed to send me as a replacement. And what blew my mind about this whole interaction was that trying to book a delivery from France to the UK and like not a not a big package, like guitar sides are like this by this, like they're not they're not big, but I could not for the life of me get this delivery booked and I ended up booking about 3 and they all just did not work out could not understand why. And then a friend of mine was just like, why don't you just use a VPN and book the delivery from like you're in France? Which literally was the easiest thing ever. Now this completely baffled me, but it was fine. Like that end, that way round was absolutely fine. Before I knew it, the sides were on their way to the UK and they arrived in one piece and I was so grateful. Also running a business, like you have no idea where your data's going. Turns out it offers a hell of a lot more than just 
changing your location. So I'm sticking with my subscription. I'd highly recommend a subscription to anybody who wants to be safe on the internet. Surfshark and I agreed to give my followers a very kind discount and an extra three months free if you sign up. You can also get your money back if you're not sure it's for you. So do do check that out and, and make use of it. And the moral of the story is always spend sides by hand and uh, always consult a friend when you're in a crisis. Anyway, back to the video. I actually have two extractors in my workshop now. I'm using one for the sanding equipment and another one for dust chip extraction. I found a second-hand Axminster one on Facebook Marketplace and it's doing the job quite nicely. I had to make a couple of mounts so that the tubes sat on the wall properly, that kind of thing. But stage one was really just organising the workshop so I could plan a very clear route of the dust tubes when it was time to map them. Okay, time to get the copper wire involved. So as I said, we're doing this so that we can have something that will ground the uh, the negative electrons so that they're not like having a party in that tube and someone's gonna come along and spark them off, which might then ignite something in the tube, such as sawdust. The likelihood of this is second to none. It's so, so rare. If I was in a massive industrial shop and the environment was less humid and there was everything dry around there and it was it was high stakes, then sure, we'd have a problem. I keep this workshop at a humidity, a stable humidity of about 45 to 55% relative humidity. And in that environment, it is extremely unlikely that anything is gonna ignite in those PVC tubes. Would I feel like an idiot though, if I, in my workshop, was the one in a bajillion that it actually happened to? Yes. So I'm gonna put the copper in anyway and see what happens. What the copper does is it provides a route for the negative electrons to jump onto, which is connected to the ground. This is why it's called earthing or grounding. There's so much earth to, uh, to give protons from. So that's why in my understanding why you have to connect it to the earth. The reason we use copper wire is because copper is a fantastic metal that conducts like a dream. Now, because static is just as viable inside the tube as outside, I'm gonna just like hop up and put some wire all the way around in and make a nice little circuit and connect it to the tubes that are already connected to the machines because they have copper in them already for this purpose. This is very basic circuit work. If anyone thinks that I'm doing something wrong, please dear God jump in the comments because this has been a hell of a learning curve and I would love to make sure that it is actually safe just in case. Hey guys, moment of truth. Let's turn this extractor on for the first time. And then I'm gonna use my planar thicknesser to test it on some ebony on a fretboard.
I hope you've enjoyed this video. I strongly suspect some of the science in this video will not be accurate. Maybe just because I've anthropomorphized the atom so much. Uh, if you have anything to add, please drop it in the comments. I'm really excited to get working in this new workshop. Now I'm set up and I'm safe. It doesn't really need to be said, but it's a very important thing to get right. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time, guys. Take care.